Good afternoon, ladies and uh, gentlemen, and a very warm welcome here from Münster in Germany. Uh, thank you for being with us today, and also thank you to Matteo Mariani from Media Systems Labs, who was organizing this webinar and who is also hosting it. My name is Martin Bartels. I am working as a biologist in sales and application at the company EMSIS. We are located in the northwestern part of Germany. EMSIS is a quite new company, was founded uh, about five years ago as a buyout of uh, the complete electron microscopy part from Olympus in Europe. We are now a team of 10 people building this young company with old roots. Most of the people out of our team uh, are working together already since more than 50 years. I started uh, with the pre predecessor of EMSIS soft imaging system in Münster about 20 years ago, so quite a long time or already. With our team and together with an established sales network worldwide, agents and authorized sales partners, we are managing to sell our products in electron microscopy uh, worldwide. Basically, EMSIS is developing and producing uh, digital camera systems for TMs. Right now, we have a product portfolio of uh, five cameras, three serving the side mounted port and two for the button mounted port. It starts at 2.8 megapixel side mounted uh, camera and ends up with 20 megapixel on uh, the Xarose at the button mounted port. Together with our agents and distributors, we are taking care of uh, installing, serving and supporting these systems in a worldwide network. And aside of this, we are also uh, the German distributor of the Nanomega products. Um, Nanomega is well known for its excellent products uh, for all special applications in diffraction imaging. The today's topics uh, would be separated into three parts. At first, I would like to give you a basic introduction into the digital image formation on a TEM uh, using a digital a digital camera. I will show you two examples and I will also point out a little bit where the current shift in digital cameras is going to. The second part will be uh, to show some supporting features included in our uh, own imaging software radius, special features which uh, support and serve our fast new cameras and uh, which makes it easy to get the best images out of the camera. And I will finalize my talk to show you in which kind of TM environment you can use these cameras and how this is established to operate in the best way. <clears throat> I would just like to show you a functional diagram of a TM camera reduced to the very basic we have the electron distribution uh, that should be detected as an image here, a very simple uh, circle as an input signal. And with all our cameras, we have at first a conversion to photons. The photons is then transferred by optics. In our cameras, it's a lens or a fiber optics, which is transferring this information uh, to uh, the chip of the digital camera, which is nowadays either a CCD or uh, a CMOS-based camera. If we have a more closer look onto the different steps needed to create a digital image, we can separate it into five different parts. We have a light to charge conver conversion, we have the charge accumulation, we have a transfer of the information through the CCD or the CMOS chip, a charge to voltage con conversation, and finally, we need to amplify the signal so that you can see a nice digital image in your imaging software. All these five steps are handled by a CCD and a CMOS camera. They use very much the same steps, but these are operated in a different sequence and in a different location. 
And you may notice in, in the passing months that there is a clear tendency towards CMOS cameras. And I will show you where the main difference is and why the focus on CMOS camera is now that dominant. <clears throat> All right, have a first look onto the five steps on the left hand side. I've listed it here and I will first refer to the more established camera technique, the CCD uh, based uh, digital cameras. CCD is the short for charge coupled device, which means that the charge itself is transported through the CCD uh, to the output system. If we have a more closer look onto a single pixel, we see that at every pixel on a CCD is separated in two different parts. It has a light sensitive region, which we can call a photosensor, and it has uh, an area aside of it, which is realized by all modern CCD cameras to transport the data away from the chip while you are exposing it. <clears throat> so after light was emitting the photosensitive region, uh, you accumulate charge and this charge can be held up here in a kind of a bucket. Uh, and uh, after the exposure time, this information is transferred to this vertical register here. And further on, we, we use uh, row by row to accumulate more charge information coming from the single horizontal rows ending up in a horizontal register which is transferring all this information to uh, a charge to voltage conversion uh, tool the signal the voltage signal is amplified and by this it can be uh, outputted to your imaging software the very special information on this is that the information transport is done via charge transport. The charge transport is time consuming and it's also power cons con consuming. So these are the drawbacks. The advantage is that you just have one amplification system which will treat all the information in the absolutely similar way. If we sum up this in a more schematic scheme, once for the repetition, we have the accumulation of charge in the pixel. We have the transfer to a vertical register. We have the transport down to the horizontal readout register. We have the uh, conversion to an, into an analog signal, which is amplified, digitized, and then you have your imaging software showing the digital data in form of pixels building up a digital image. This kind of uh, CCD is used, for example, in our button mounted camera, Kimesa. The pro is compared to older slow scan CCDs. This process is already very fast. It is using an internal shutter and the exposure time is controlled by, by uh, this. It has a well-balanced noise controlling system because of the single amplification system and still can have a large well capacity even compared with the old slow scan CCDs. Now switch over to the new technique. Uh, the cameras using a CMOS image sensor where the CMOS is the short for complementary metal oxide semiconductor. So the name indicates al already this is of different material. We are using here the semiconductor material for the complete process and inf information, which makes it quite easy to have a high integration of all the processes on a very, very small area. And this is also already the main difference. Have a look onto the left side here. We have the same five steps, but the sequence is different. And if I zoom into a single pixel, you see that also the location is, is different. Again, I have a separation here uh, of, a photo, of a light sensitive region and an area where the data processing uh, is taking place. Again, here I have the accumulation of uh, charges in a kind of a bucket. And after the exposure time, this information is further processed. But now directly on a single pixel, you have the charge to voltage conversion here. And this signal is directly amplified on a single pixel. 
so that the further transport of the data is a voltage signal and every single pixel on such a CMOS based sensor is addressed by its own microwire. So completely different in the structure to the CCD. It's a more complex setup, but it allows you also in a well-controlled way, a more speedy readout. Finally, you see here below, you have a microwire accumulating all the voltage signals, which are then transferred away from the sensor and it reaches your imaging uh, software. Latest developments and these cameras could even increase the speed by just using more parallel channels here to read out the raw information uh, so that the complete readout of uh, a single exposure can be even faster. And there will be new developments on uh, this kind of technique, which will do more integrated processes on a single pixel. Uh, we expect to have a digitization process in a pixel uh, already with the next gen generation of cameras. So that basically a digital information will already leave a single pixel and could be transported um, very easily, very rapidly without any loss to uh, your imaging uh, software. So the main output comparing these both techniques is not a strong point regarding the image quality or uh, 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 building up a perfect image. It's more regarded to the speed. If we compare the pros on such a camera due to the high integration options and the low power consumption, this can be very compact uh, semiconductor materials and we expect a lot of integrated processes on every single which is then read out like you know it from, for example, your mobile phones as, as well. All right, we have um, in our product portfolio two cameras which are using already CMOS image sensors. The latest release is our 12 megapixel Furona camera. It's a side mounted camera and like all our side mounted cameras, this is also lens optical coupled. <clears throat> uh, uh, so, so that we have a standard setup for all our, our cameras, independent if it's a CCD or a CMOS based camera. This camera can offer a live performance of close to 30 frames per second at full resolution. So a real a clear advantage on all other CCD cameras. You never use binning anymore. We have equipped the camera with the easy to use USB 3 interface so that basically all modern PCs or notebooks can be used to um, connect to be connected to this camera. As it is typical for side mounted cameras, the strong application area for the for uh, the Ferona the is the biomedical ap application tissue observing pathology work, everything where let's say the ultimate resolution is not needed, but you would like to have a large field of view uh on on your uh on your tissue but due to the small pixels and the 12 megapixels it allows you already at standard magnification to see all the details on your tissue on our tech now just with 120k okay, we we should even could even show that this camera can resolve very tiny structures uh the image here is a graphitized carbon and it goes down to a resolution of 0 0.5 nanometer on a standard high contrast instrument. Our most successful camera nowadays is our 20 megapixel CMOS based button mounted camera. It's called Xarosa. And even this camera offers a live performance of about 30 frames per second at full resolution. So even with this camera, you don't need to use binning modes for the live image anymore. This camera is fiber optical coupled. We use a taper and uh, this taper uh, offers a larger diameter of the fibers towards the scintillator compared to the situation on the CMOS chip. 
It's a two by one uh, taper, which gives us a four times larger uh, field of view compared to the size of the CMOS sensors. So you can see such a taper as a light trap, which increases the effective pixel size and thus makes it a very sensitive, a speedy camera with a large field field of view. And this makes it because of this a very versatile system, which can be used for nearly all applications in uh, TM imaging. Have a look on this tissue, just a standard tissue, but this is now a button mounted camera. We have a magnification of uh, nearly 10,000 times here, and uh, the button mounted camera can give you really an overview on what you would like to see. And due to the 20 megapixel, you can already resolve the tiny structures at 10,000 times magnification. This makes it a really a nice work with such a camera. I have a few more examples here, here to show this is just the yeast again in the range of 10,000 times magnification and very small details on the area here is immunogold labelings 10 nanometer gold. You can already resolve at a magnification of 10,000 times. So this gives you nice analytical options on uh, such a camera. Another image, uh, formerly nearly impossible with a button mounted camera, this is standard kidney tissue. And you have, uh, you see here a stitched image, 25 Xarosa images built to, together. You can nicely see this as an overview image at 4,800 times magnification, but with a spatial resolution of roughly one nanometer per pixel. And if you zoom in, this is the zoom, the zoom level of 25% only. You see already all the details, for example, in the mitochondria. So a very nice combination of overview and detail view with the button mounted camera. Here another application from a customer in, in the UK. The Xarosa plugged onto a GEM 1400 electron microscope. Uh, this is at 80,000 times magnification, nice resolution of all, all the details, but also this is the overview image. Also, yeah, I can zoom in 50% uh, of the camera and already at 50%, you can nicely see all the substructures of this bacteriophage. So a large area of applications and obviously a button mounted camera should be very suitable to high Mac ranges or to high to ultra high resolution. And uh, this is also true for the Xarosa. It should be able to show you all the details your current TEM is, uh, is offering you. This was a short overview of two examples of the new camera series based on CMOS sensors. As I told you before, the main advantage of these cameras over the interline CCDs is the larger speed. And you need to have a software supporting this speed, so to really to benefit from it and to make use of it. We have our own software, just a new release of the Radius version 2.1 a month ago, which is a standard imaging software as, as, as it owns. So it has all the features you would like to expect from such an imaging software, you have line profiles, you can use Fourier in, in the live mode. Uh, you have all the information on the metadata available and radius have a nice camera control and in addition can also control to a certain extent modern microscopes. <clears throat> but I would like to point out some extra features of the software, which makes it very easy and very efficient to work with the more speedier cameras we can offer now. One of the features is the radius fast live function. It is automatically activated if you click on, on the live button here in the camera con control. And by doing this, you will automatically have the outer exposure, outer brightness and contrast on uh, your specimen. And the fast live mode ensures that you're working at least with 10 frames per second during all the time. 
completely independent on how many how much light is uh, offered by by the microscope if you typically need to expand your exposure time we using digital gain to show you at least uh, an image where you can operate on which you can use for example for searching on on your specimen so just one click go to live and the camera will take care to give you a nice exposure image and by doing this it automatically calculates the needed exposure time for a final a final snapshot which is here in the range of 350 milliseconds but it could also be one or uh, two seconds depending on the amount of information supplied by the microscope. <clears throat> you can easily imagine that reading out a camera like the Xarosa, which is uh, offering 30 frames in live with a 20 megapixel sensor will create a lot of noise. There is no way to avoid this. Uh, and uh, this is quite okay if you are operating on your on your specimen if you search for a dedicated area but it might be really disturbing if you need to see the details or if you for example would like to focus on on, on your image and we have a solution for that as well instead of going to a manual exposure which slows down the whole system we are using an, um, a live image averaging creating a kind of a ring buffer which allows you to get rid of most of the statistical noise and this gives you a much better a clearer approach to to your image and it should now be possible to do a proper focusing for example or just a precise measurement on on your live image if you would like to keep this you can also use it for for the snapshot but typically this is balanced by using a longer exposure time Nevertheless, if you do a snapshot averaging as well, you will increase the signal to noise ratio to a certain extent and the overall image quality might be slightly better, even though. Summing up this function, very easy to, to use. You have an on off in the camera control during live. You simply activate the image averaging here. If you need it, you simply deactivate it while the camera is showing you'll use a live image. If you like to have it for snapshot, you just activate it here and you select the amount of images you would like to average. <clears throat> the next tool I would like to show you is uh, coping with a problem you all know about. It is if you start is to you start your live image and you will see a certain drift in your uh, a specimen very annoying because now you need to reduce the exposure time to amount that you can minimize uh, the drift in in your image and to get rid of a smearing image like you can see see here another way to cope with this is now in uh, incorporated into the camera control uh, it's snapshot drift correction it simply does a snapshot but in uh, the background, it tiles the complete exposure time into smaller uh, single images. It will, we are using cross correlation to, to calculate the drift and we stitch uh, the shifted images later on together so that you can see here, instead of having a smearing image, you see a clearly focused uh, image. This works pretty well over a range of different uh, exposure times and it's a quite nice help uh, on your daily uh, digital imaging. Again, here included in the camera control, just activated or deactivated during life, it will remove the complete drift out of your samples. And if you need it, you can even combine it with the snapshot averaging. It will simply take much longer for the, uh, for the snapshot. Oh, sorry, that was one too fast. <clears throat> As I was talking about before, there is a certain need for high speed or for speedier cameras right now, which also is due to the fact that we have now different or additional options 
in a TEM to observe dynamic processes. This is, for example, due to uh, very specialized specimen holders, which allows you to do some treatments on your specimen while it is in the TEM, put some heating on some gas material, whatever. And uh, also for smooth material, you want probably like to observe the very fast uh, responses on, on this material on the treatment. And if a camera can see this, it would be very nice to have a movie recorder who can just record the actions, the interactions with the material in the TEM. Also, this function is very simply incorporated into the camera control. You switch it on during live the snapshot button will alter into a movie button. You click onto the movie button, it will start recording the movie. You click again, it will stop recording the movie. And uh, we are using a dedicated hardware for our Speedia cameras so that very, very fast SSDs are used, which are able to really take all this huge amount of data for uh, such a, a movie. So we just start, stop it, with, with a mouse click and we have different settings in the setup here if you would like to optimize it for speed or if you're more focusing on the quality. I have a simple example here to show you. This was acquired with a Xarosa camera, not yet coupled to the taper, but using a lens system. And you can see it can uh, use it full performance to show a really fast processes uh, later on in your TEM. Right. Okay, there is another function uh, to extend the basic camera con control. Even with a camera like the Xarosa, which offers already a reasonable good field of view for a button mounted system, you probably would like to see more of, of your specimen in a single image and you can extend this by the available multiple image alignment tool, which is simply activated by a mouse click also here during live. We can use stage or image shift and the software on magnification ranges where both stage and image shift would be suitable, selects on its own which function would be better to give you the best results. So this process is fully automated after you have selected your uh, MIA functionality and you have uh, selected the, uh, uh, the number of images you would like to stitch, you can simply click on the snapshot button. I have a result here in the following slide which shows you a five by five uh, stitching with the Xarosa camera. I was just highlighting the single images by using a so Sobel filter so that you can see the orientation and uh, but the stitching process is fully automated and it's very easily and a rapid process to get a really big image uh, 14 by 10 microns uh, in size, one gigabyte file size uh, but still offering you a spatial resolution of uh, 0 0.5 nanometers per pixel. So if you zoom in, you can still have all the details and direct access. There is another function in the camera control which uh, is not applied to XY direction, but allows you to enhance the dynamic range of your image. Our cameras are 14-bit cameras, but by using the high dynamic range tool of the camera control, you can increase the dynamics of your image. Also this in a fully automated way. Have a look onto the following slide. On the left hand side, you see just uh, a standard exposure, fully automated uh, snapshot done with the Xarosa camera. Uh, resulting in a mean intensity of roughly 9,000 gray values. That's something we would like to, to achieve, something between 7 and 10,000 for uh, a 14-bit camera. Just by using the HDR snapshot, 
we shifted this now to a mean intensity of 12,000 uh, gray values, which simply means that the dynamic range in your image increases and you have more smaller gray value ranges to separate the particles, which can later on be really helpful if you, for example, would like to do a threshold based particle detection. All right, this should just give you a short overview on dedicated features which we included in our software to really serve the speedy cameras uh, at best. And I would like to give you now an overview about the different TAM environments where we can uh, or you can use our cameras right now. And I'm very happy to introduce um, with the latest version, RADIUS version 2.1, that the Xerosa is now embedded into the Hitachi user interface of the H7800, the latest uh, 120 kV standard machine from Hitachi. On this uh, new uh, environment, we install RADIUS and the camera on the PC uh, of the Hitachi workstation. And you can decide on your own if you would like to use the Hitachi camera control to uh, grab your digital images or if you would like to use radio. So both is, is still possible. There is uh, an option in the Hitachi UI which allows you to disconnect from the camera control in the Hitachi UI and using radios and vice versa. So this will give you a nice option to use the best features of both softwares for your digital image acquisition. On the GL instruments, the situation is slightly different. Uh, in any case, we have an MDIS workstation operating our camera, but we have an Ethernet uh, connection uh, linking us to the GL10 PC. And on the GL10 PC, we have a dedicated remote software, which allows us the full remote access to the instrument. This is realized for the old modern microscopes, the GL1400 plus and flash, the 2100 uh, plus and flash, and also the F200. So on all these instruments, we have full remote access, we can all the fancy things like I just showed you before. And in, a dash, in addition here, we have also our cameras integrated into the geotomography software, allowing you to grab nice tomograms with our cameras, but using uh, the geotomography uh, tomography software. We have also a unique solution for a more legacy instrument, the Tech Knife from FEI Thermo Fisher, where a lot of these machines are still running world, worldwide, but the environment, the, the operating system is limited to Windows XP 32 bit, and all the newer cameras are no longer supporting 32 bit. So they are all limited to 64 4 bit, which is also true for our cameras. So there is no way to install it directly on a techno in instrument. We developed a new solution based on the radius satellite software, which we install on the 32-bit environment of the techno PC. And this tool is communicating with the scripting adapter of the techno. And by having this in, in between, we again have full remote access like in the Hitachi, like in the GL in instruments, and we can do all the fancy things I've showed you before, also on this techno instrument. This is also possible with a third party software called Zero EM, which was developed at the very beginning as a tomography acquisition package by David Mastronati from the Boulder University in Colorado. But over the years, this software package was growing and growing, and it can do now much more very dedicated uh, image acquisition, like low-dose, la like large-scale imaging. 
and all the MDIS cameras are accessible by the software. And CRM offers the same type of satellite installed on the Techno PC, and we can have this CRM installed on our MDIS workstation, and you can decide just on occasion if you like to use the radio software for standard imaging and for dedicated processes like acquiring tomograms to switch over to the CRM software. It supports our cameras, but it supports also all the 10 manufacturers I have showed you, you before. Uh, so it gives you a lot of additional uh, fu functionality. The MDIS plugin, which is needed to run our cameras, is free, and you can just download it from our uh, server. We are very happy to have Günter Resch with us. He is a real expert on setting up a CRM system, on doing trainings and also services. Uh, so for all of you who would like to have a nice starting point, uh, he will be able to help you just configuring your systems. <coughs> I'm uh, Coming to the end of, of my talk, if you would like to have more information about the camera range, more technical details, if you have more questions about the software, uh, you can directly contact us. You can also contact Media System Labs, which is our uh, partner in, in Italy. And I would now hand over to uh, Matteo to open the time for questions and answers.